Welcome back you guys. Here in front of me is the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. It's a new generation and there's a lot going on here. Bigger battery, more range. Let's get into it. First thing you might notice when you come up to the Outlander plug-in hybrid is the badging on either sides of the vehicle. Big EV, and then below that, plug-in hybrid. And at first I was kind of like, okay, well, you can't really advertise. I don't feel it's fair that Mitsubishi is advertising that this is an EV, uh, because it is, of course, a plug-in hybrid. It does have a 2.4 liter inline four under the hood. But once I began driving it, I feel like it's earned that EV badge. So let's go over the powertrain, the drivetrain, and see what's up. So standard here on the new Outlander plug-in hybrid, we have two electric motors, one in the front, one in the rear. So there's nothing physically connecting the rear motor to the front motor, they are independent. And of course, up front, we have that gasoline engine that will power, in certain scenarios, the front wheels. So standard here, because of that, the powertrain on all plug-in hybrid Outlander models is standard. Total system output, 248 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Now it's interesting because the rear electric motor actually makes more power than the front one, but less torque. So I'm not sure exactly how they've kind of distributed that torque and power and kind of changed up those specs but they have and of course all outlanders come standard with all-wheel drive uh, now how that all-wheel drive works compared to a traditional gasoline powered vehicle because there is no center differential there's no physical connection between the rear and front motors the torque front to rear is distributable a lot wider than it would necessarily be if we had a traditional uh, gear set or clutch pack in the center differential kind of uh, inhibiting us to let's say in certain scenarios send 100% of the torque to the front or 100% to the rear if you don't know what a plug-in hybrid is it basically just means this has an onboard battery that can be used to power the vehicle exclusively. Right now, I'm not using any gas at all. And then if I choose, I can plug it in overnight or at a charging station. And effectively, if you live in a metropolis area, a slightly denser area, this could absolutely be used to commute exclusively on electric power if you wanted to. So big change for this generation is the size of the battery. They've actually made the battery capacity larger. It's a 20 kilowatt hour battery, which on a side note is actually larger than the Volvo XC90 Recharges battery that I drove recently. And that costs $40,000 more, at least than the Outlander plug-in hybrid. So this has one of the largest batteries in a plug-in hybrid period across the board which i was not <laughs> expecting and despite the fact that the battery's capacity is actually raised increased from the previous generation the size the physical size of the battery is actually smaller and to add on top of that standard all outlander plug-in hybrids have dc fast charging that's huge okay as far as i know as of recording this video this is the only plug-in hybrid that can be charged with dc fast charging uh, it does have that connection in the side there that's great that just adds another kind of another layer if you want to squeeze all the range out of the outlander what is the range total range for everything 687 kilometers gasoline and electric motor if you're just driving on ev power 61 kilometers I was in the previous generation Outlander plug-in hybrid. A friend of a friend owns one not too long ago, a few weeks ago. Uh, this thing in front of me here, the new generation, is so far ahead of that vehicle. Everything about it, from the looks on the front end, whether you like it or not, I'm coming around to it. A little bit too much chrome for me. Uh, but when you look at the top badging here, of course, it gives off a little bit of that Range Rover vibe, especially when I 
come up to the vehicle from here and I just see the hood line, the fender line here, and the headlight, that screams Range Rover. It screams Range Rover Evoke or just a Range Rover, which is kind of what they're going for. And a couple of people have mentioned that as well. <laughs> it's, it's not the prettiest vehicle, I don't think, uh, but it's coming around to me. Of course, big Mitsubishi logo on the front here. What counts though is what's inside. So starting price here for the Outlander plug-in hybrid, $46,000 Canadian. This one in front of me, the GT model, top tops back here in Canada, $57,000. Canadian. Of course, it does have the larger 20 inch wheels on here and they're wider for the GT 255s all the way around. This has been a partnership with Nissan. Nissan owns a large chunk of Mitsubishi and this is sitting on the same platform as the Nissan Rogue, although this uses a different all wheel drive system and it looks a lot different. This looks nothing like the Nissan Rogue. So this is where it gets a little bit better for me. It's a little bit simpler than the front end. There's not as much chrome. There's not as much going on here. Of course, because it is an EV, uh, it does not have any exhaust pipes here. They're probably hidden. I'm not going to check. Now, what do you get with the top spec? That's a big difference. $10,000 from standard plug-in hybrid to this top spec. So with the GT model, you get a hands-free lift gate, which is height adjustable here. You also get these rear sunshades, very luxurious. And of course, leatherette trimmed door panels all the way around quilted leatherette. This looks kind of nice. The stitching is a bit much, it's everywhere, but if that's your thing, that's your thing. You also get these semi-aniline leather seats here. Now these are slightly different than the standard leather seats that come lower down on the trim packages. Basically, it's a coating that makes them a little bit more durable and they look a little bit smoother. Some of the pores of the leather are hidden here. Of course, they are stitched just like the door inserts. Standard on all Outlander plug-in hybrids is the leather steering wheel. Now, what you also get are massage seats. And this is where it becomes a bit of an issue. I love massage seats. The XC90 Recharge has great ones. Okay, let's wait for all these noises. You gotta give me 10 noises, Mitsubishi, when I fire up the vehicle. I love the XC90's massage seats. The MDX Type S, great massage seats. Most Mercedes products have amazing seats like that. Uh, here, and Mitsubishi kind of hints at this when you turn it on. There is a control on the side of the seat here. It's nothing more than really just the lumbar pushing your back forward, pushing it back uh, at the top and the bottom. That's all it really does. I played around with the massage settings. I can't feel a difference. Uh, what do we have here? Relaxing, refreshing, and just lumbar. You can, of course, adjust the intensity and the speed. That changes a little bit, but there is no difference. I can't tell the difference between refreshing and relaxing. So that's kind of the first clue that Mitsubishi really is just trying to pack in all of these features into a vehicle that doesn't necessarily need them for this price, but that's what they're going for. The list of features is long and I'm happy that they're able to pack all of this stuff in. It's just the execution could be a little bit better uh, and the focus on certain things could be a little bit better. You also get wireless charging in the GT model. You get a upgraded nine speaker Bose sound system. You get a heads up display uh, and then a couple of other things as well. Of course, this, as I mentioned, is shared with the Nissan Rogue. The interior is a lot different here, although you may recognize the HVAC controls. This is all Nissan. It's all physical buttons with a digital screen. The screen here, this is all Nissan, comes straight out of the Nissan. Uh, the navigation, I will mention, is not on the bottom, bottom spec. It is powered by TomTom, so it's not Google uh, or Google Maps or anything, although you are able to have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay here. Center screen here, big 10.3 inch digital display here. It's a little bit customizable, uh, very interesting display. It's high res, I can see my energy flow. The speed on the right and the EV and charge gauge on the left, you know the big, uh, uh, what is it called, the showcase wheel from Price is Right, I don't know. It looks like that. It's the big wheel that they have to spin and crank down. Here, that's what those gauges look like. We can also change it though through the menus here uh, to be a little bit more traditional. Everything in here looks and feels premium. The seats, 
Aside from the massage function, the seats are great. These seats are exceptionally comfortable. And one thing I will note, this plastic aluminum looking finish here, even with the panoramic roof closed, there was an insane reflection uh, down here when I was just sitting in traffic. I found it to be incredibly distracting. That was something I was not expecting. I don't know what's being used in this space here. If there's something underneath, I don't know about but it should have been a larger center console here. This center console is incredibly small. The menu system for the most part is responsive. It just, the software and how it looks feels a little bit dated and I'm sure they will update that uh, in future vehicles. But of course they're working with Nissan and I'm not complaining. Everything else is like, wow, <laughs> compared to the previous generation. The previous generation Outlander plug-in hybrid had one of, if not the worst gauge gear selectors, sorry, I've ever experienced in a vehicle. It looked weird, it felt plasticky, and I felt like I was gonna break it, and the parking button was like, I had to reach behind the gear selector to hit it. Now, this is a little bit more simple here. So we figured out the interior is incredibly comfortable, but the big thing, of course, standard, are the third row seats. I have to try them out. Let's go back there. See, of course, you don't have a deep cargo space. You don't have any room because of this third row, so it better be worth it. As you guys can see, the cup holder's back there. One thing I will note, this is great, and there's a button for this up front, just beside the steering wheel. You have an outlet here, a standard 110 outlet, which you can use. Of course, use the battery power to plug in whatever you want. Make coffee, make popcorn, print some documents from your laptop. I don't care, but it's there. Let's open this up. All right, two. Oh, now we just pull this strap. Oh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I was wondering how humans were gonna fit back there. Wait, now how does this even? Does the do those clear? Let's let's find out. Okay, that is a a feat of packaging. This might be a bit of a squeeze. Oh yeah, they slide forward, we'll climb back in here. Nice leather. Ooh, oh yeah, that's a squeeze. <laughs> I am leaning, leaning far. These are seats for children only. Some third rows are like in the MDX, a squeeze to get into, but you can fit adults back there if you must. These back seats, no adults fitting back here. These are for children only. And as you guys can see, now these do actually roll forward a little bit more than they are right now. Uh, but as you guys can see, there's there's zero, literally zero leg room here. Uh, if the seats are kind of in a relatively normal position. Otherwise, the second row's great. You do have heated seats back here. You have temperature control. Uh, and you do actually have two smaller pockets at the top here. I really like this. I haven't seen a vehicle do this before. Uh, very useful. It's the opposite of what Honda has been doing, especially in the Accord, taking away pockets. Mitsubishi, all of their pockets are intact. So the hybrid system has a few controls here. If we hit this EV button on the dash, we can choose between normal EV save and charge modes. Normal, basically the car will just dictate and decide what's best between the gasoline powered engine powering a generator that will then send power through the electric motors or at higher speeds, it will actually directly power the front wheels, say on the highway, on the freeway, or um, some more spirited driving. If you need all the power, it will do that. EV, of course, is electric power only. Uh, save would be, if you need to save the battery because when you know you're going back to your neighborhood and you don't wanna disturb anyone or make any noise, you can do that and it will save whatever battery charge you have left. Uh, charge, of course, the gasoline engine will basically just act as a giant generator, a 2.4 liter generator. And then of course, drive modes, and this more so dictates how the all wheel drive system works in conjunction with the front and rear motors and how that torque is distributed. We've got power mode, which effectively will give you all the power as soon as possible. It will prepare for that. So as I switched over there, the gasoline engine fired up immediately. And the response is great. 
overall, like if I had to sum up before I go through the rest of the drive modes, the hybrid system and how it feels, it's very seamless. I do not feel the changeover uh, from direct drive gasoline to the front wheels to just uh, the generator motor powering through the electric motors. The, the noise isn't too bad. Of course, when you're full throttle, most of these plug-in hybrids tend to get a little bit noisy or you notice it more because you may have just been coming from EV only driving. And the torque rolls on smoothly. It, it really does. It's got that kind of EV throttle pedal feel, plenty of torque. Especially if we're in tarmac mode, it seems to kind of prepare you, of course, prepare the gasoline engine uh, for the application of throttle. But sometimes it doesn't always get it right and there is a little bit of a delay, but there's a few times where I've been, where I've almost questioned, is this the full power? And then I'll get off the throttle and get back on. And then I'm like, oh, now that's the full power. So I'm not sure what's going on there. As far as handling goes, I mean, there's, there's not much amazing to say about it, but there's also nothing really bad to say about it either. It's quiet in here. It's comfortable. There's definitely a little bit of pitch, dive, and roll. I mean, it's a very soft vehicle. Even with these 20s on the GT model, the ride quality is great. There's not a whole lot of mechanical kind of feel coming through the steering here, but the overall handling is great. There's nothing to complain about in the handling department here. One thing I will note though, which is absolutely less than ideal here, the brake feel. The brake feel, there's no feel. The brake pedal feels just like air it feels like a sponge especially in the top half and that changeover from regen braking to the brake calipers actually squeezing the rotors there is a line that i can feel very distinctly i mean in any of these plug-in hybrids it's a little bit of a distraction or a little bit of a game to watch the energy flow screen and see where your torque's being distributed because once you run out of battery, the gasoline engine, because it is a larger displacement four cylinder, isn't wildly efficient. So over the course of a week, I did what I do best and blurred the line between work and play in order to gather some data for you guys while on a 1000 kilometer road trip. So naturally, I began with a full battery and set off through the mountains towards Oliver, choosing not to stop and charge on the way there because, you know, time is a crucial part of efficiency too. While in town, I charged and drove around for a couple days exclusively using the battery power and then set off towards home with a full charge. This time, I stopped for 20 minutes at a DC fast charger in Manning Park to share lunch with my animal friends before arriving back home. So I averaged 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers, which is about 34 miles per gallon for our American friends. That of course includes quite a bit of driving in EV mode. Yeah, while well, not really fair because I didn't traverse an entire mountain range in it, the new Accord Hybrid averaged 46 miles per gallon under my watch. And that one required no stopping to charge because it can't or doesn't need to, depending on how you look at it, right? It's also worth noting though, I had three passengers in the Outlander while the Accord was a solo drive. Having road trip data on a plugin like this is crucial to me because it doesn't cater to just one of its strengths. I took advantage of the entire gas and EV range here. One week you could use no fuel, while the next you could go through more than a tank. It caters to you, not the other way around. Another thing I will note, when you go over speed bumps in the Outlander, that rear seat there, it doesn't seem to have a lock or a tie down of any, of any kind. Any time I go over a speed bump, just go dung, go dung. The rear seat is just flopping up and down if you go over a speed bump. Now I looked at my speed, I'm not, I'm not ripping over these speed bumps. I was going about anywhere between 20 and 25 kilometers an hour, well below a school zone limit speed. And the car is just making this terrible noise coming from behind. I was, I've never experienced that in any other vehicle. It's just those little fit and finish kind of things that really bother me because other than that, especially compared to the previous generation, this is 
light years ahead. To sum it up, I feel as if Mitsubishi is spreading themselves a little bit too thin here. Only though when it comes to kind of additional features, right? The massage seats I mentioned, the third row, which is nice to have if you do have children and you need the extra space. But when it comes to other things that could have been refined down to their nth degree a little bit better, like the brake feel and stuff like that, I feel like they kind of narrowed in the focus there. Great value for the money, I'd say, overall. So thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.